and Marty, we're here coming to you from Marty's Garden on YouTube. And I'm inside today because it's freezing for me out there. I live in the subtropics. It's 10 degrees, which is around 50 Fahrenheit. And it's quite chilly. But what I want to do is I want to go outside and I want to show you what's going on uh, and how I'm keeping the micro farm surviving and growing and being productive in these cool winter days. Let's head outside, shall we? Now I have these mini greenhouses, these are the ones you can buy at Bunnings and you can get them at Amazon. Uh, I'll just leave, I'll leave a link for you guys if you ever want to get across there and check them out at Amazon to, to buy one. They're pretty cheap and they are quite durable for the price that you get. So um, I think I paid around about 40 to $50 from, from, uh, from Bunnings and uh, you know, they, they do the job and they've got the little zipper at the front here. And, you know, on the cooler days, you can see there's a lot of condensation in there. Now, when I open it up, when there's sun in there, it, it really gets up to around about, I would say, on a cool day, maybe 18, it gets up to around about 24, 25, even 28 at times. I've stuck my hand in on wall, it's too hot. I've got to open it up and let the air circulate through. So I'm just going to unzip it and show you what's going on inside these little guys. So here we have inside the mini greenhouse. Now... You come to the front here, I've got the red sole growing here, which is grows is really well as a micro green and you can grow it on. The chooks hit it really hard, so I had to transplant it. And I'm going to be selling these at the Saturday market out the front of my house in Suffolk Park in Hayter Street. You can see some red cabbage at the back here, some landcress, which we come down, there's the arugula rocket, which we call it. More red sorrel, which is a beautiful salad plant to mix in salad. It has like a sour taste and adds so much colour to those plates. Uh, we've got the more landcress. And coming down, we've got some uh, seed here that's going to be raised. This is actually this one. This is the same as this one, the red radish, red sango radish. And I put the, uh, the vermiculite on top just to, uh, you know, I don't press the seeds down. I put the vermiculite on top. And then it's very light, it stays moist, and it comes up, it germinates really easy. As you can see, like look at this, look how thick this arugula is. And that is about, it's cold, so it's about a week old. And usually I would be picking it by now if we were in the summer period. But it's growing nice and thick. And I just got to watch out that it doesn't get too wet. And because it's very thick and then it can get uh, that mould inside it. Now I can grow some plants outside, yeah, like the broccoli family, all the broccoli, the cabbages and things that like the winter. This is the red cabbage, it's got a beautiful red stem. It's got like a miso style flavour, it doesn't grow much bigger than that. If you look at my finger here, you can see how tall it is. And I'll get about a sandwich bag out of that. Uh, we've got here the watercress growing outside, which, you know, it transplants really easy. I've got it in a full container there, just fresh clean water. It throws little shoots out, which is great, so you can get new plants. And you know it's uh, it's classed as a superfood, very high in vitamin C. So I'll be selling these as well, uh, about two dollars fifty to three dollars a punnet, depending on the size of the plant. So looking right up my row here, you can see each stand holds each uh, greenhouse holds about eight trays. And you know, a tray is worth it's about seven dollars fifty to me in the winter, and ten to twelve dollars in the summer because they just get a lot more product out of it. And this one's another type of mini greenhouse that I bought cheap because it was on sale. It doesn't hold as many trays, and it's more designed to fit into the corner. But you can see I've got sunflower growing here in the winter, which is you know, uh, <laughs> it's not an easy feat if you've ever grown sunflower before in cold weather. We've got the more of the red radish here, which is, you know, that's my most uh, popular uh, come and go. Well, it's not a cut and go. It's actually just a one cut harvest micro green for the restaurant. So I really like it. It's big and chunky and it's got a lot of spicy flavor, especially in the winter. And in the winter, it seems to, it's cooler, gets a lot redder texture as well. And takes about two weeks to grow where I can harvest in seven to ten days in the summer. Over here I have some more trays outdoor, some land cress. Uh, you can see I've got some sunflowers here. They're much slower. They were put in the same time as the one in the greenhouses because they're outside. But, you know, I'll be able to harvest them and get food and eventually I'll have sunflower 
product to sell as a microgreen. Here I've got uh, more seeds germinating and the reason I put the cover in is to keep the birds and the bush turkeys and any mice or anything around that wants to decide to have a dig in it. Um, and also the black cover protects it, keeps the cool wind off it. It gets black, the black gets hot from the sun and also creates it dark so the seeds will, the roots will go down. And the reason I've got the bricks on it is because the bush turkeys like to come along and push it off and dig it up. And within about 30 seconds I can lose a whole tray which you know is it's quite valuable to me uh, each and every tray. This is more bush turkey makeshift <laughs> with the bird netting at the moment just to keep them out. Uh, the chickens got in here yesterday afternoon, they snuck in through a hole through the side here. Did some damage on my sunflowers down the bottom, but not too much. And this lets a fair bit of light in, and it does stop the, the cool breeze a bit, but, you know, you can see here, through there, you can see more of the red radish growing there. I've got rocket in here, landcress, and sunflower as well. And if you ever got problems with birds, this is a great idea to, you know, to protect them because it's very cheap to buy this bird netting and it's easy it's light to throw around and it's you know just it's a great all-purpose thing to have when you're micro farming at home because you're going to come across pests and birds and different problems at some stage in your farming career now i've got some rocket growing here i'm going to be selling these these are just transplanted actually from microgreens that i bought from the shop at woolies believe it or not and some more watercress the garlic chives, they were started as a microgreen, they're starting to grow pretty well now. Little seedling arugula rocket coming up, which I'll be selling as well out the front of the house on the Saturdays, just, you know, to boost my income a little bit through the winter. And into spring, coming up in the next six weeks, I should be able to sell quite a lot of vegetable punnets and pots as the spring progresses. So some tips for you, you want to have a white wall behind you if you can possibly, white reflects more light and so if you get more light you're going to get more optimum growth. If you can get a dark gravel on the base around the bottom of your greenhouses and in the area there you can warm up your microclimate because the gravel will get warm through the heat through the day and will release that slowly again through the night. You can do similar thing with big rocks and bricks and stuff like that. Uh, some people even shove bricks in their thing. You can put composts compost systems right near your greenhouses and have a way to for the heat to actually keep it warmer uh, you do your research on that it's a little bit tricky but it, it is very possible to do you can look at getting bigger greenhouses you know extend out from the wall so you can walk in I've just taken this option because uh, I can pack up and move very quickly and be in another spot uh, if I need to be and because uh, I'm, a, I'm a renter and you know so this this is a pretty easy way to grow food fast. Now keep in mind I really only have about a two month, possibly three months if it's really cold uh, winter and we do get you know uh, up to 22 degree days in the really warm days and average you know around 17 to 18 is quite regular and so we're looking at around about a 17 today so these these greenhouses will warm up, they'll warm up and uh, they'll, they'll be quite happy in there, the seeds will germinate and you know it'll do quite well now. Uh, I, I could have a bigger area. I should probably have a bigger area, but you know, being a renter, that's um, not really uh, something I can do at the moment. That's why I'm expanding over at Marty's Garden, Philip. Well, there you have it, my friends. A video showing you all about my micro farm and how I'm growing these micro greens and some other plants in the winter months in the subtropics in Australia. Now, if you are in a very in a cooler zone. You can do this the same methods in the spring and autumn. Just put them into place and you'll grow your window period. Extend your window period. Also, please guys, share this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you want to learn more about growing microgreens and if you'd like me to show you more about what's going on in the farm. Like farm, microgreen, farm updates in the micro farm. And I will keep them coming out for you because I want to provide for you what you want to see as well and it's hard for me to know unless you tell me so leave a comment down below guys what you'd like to see all right if you haven't subscribed already subscribe to marty's garden and we'll see you in the next video real soon oh sun's coming out
they tell me there's more rain on the way. I'm going to cap some more water off the roof. Bye for now. Happy gardening. We'll see you at the next video real soon. Mm -hmm.